obviously took the timing belt off and then this is the, the timing belt tensioner. Yeah, it sounds like we probably better go ahead and put a new one on it. Usually if you can hear the bearings, if you can hear that noise then you should go ahead and replace it. A new one's going to be quiet and also isn't going to spin as long, which seems counterintuitive, but when they're new they have grease packed in them and they'll just spin a little bit. When they get about wore out they'll spin freely and make that noise, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, Order a new one of those. We have to overnight parts from Japan. We'll put it on my tab at Harry's. Yes. As well as the uh, idler pulley for the AC belt. And then we should be able to replace the water pump and go back together with the front end there. And we're getting to the point where flywheel clutch, transmission, and start thinking about getting it running. So stay tuned. Alright guys, it's a few days later. I got the parts in that we talked about ordering for the timing belt tensioner and the idler pulley. Um, also have a O-ring for the distributor. I ordered that because it's uh, been leaking oil. This whole end of the engine was all covered with oil. It still kind of is, but um, went ahead and ordered that new O-ring for the distributor. Hopefully that'll help with that. And I also had this already too, but I didn't show it. This is a uh, oil feed adapter for the for a turbo oil feed. This just goes in where the oil pressure switch is. Just take the switch out and screw this guy in. And then the oil pressure switch screws back into this end. And then you have a 1 8 NPT fitting there to put your dash 4 fitting for your oil feed. This is British pipe thread here and here for the switch. Let's go ahead and cut this guy open. I actually used Rock Auto quite a bit on this. It's funny they always give you a magnet in somebody's car. It's a Volkswagen there. So there's our timing belt tensioner. It appears to be the right one. pulley which I think is the right one. I'll go ahead and grab the other one and compare it if I remember where I laid it down at. Oh yeah it's in the cart. I'm not sure about that one. Maybe. check into that one a little more but anyway I'm gonna be out here today um, gonna try to get that stuff going I'm gonna try to get the timing belt water pump on it today um, and just keep going you know I, I was wanting to take this uh, coolant line off it actually runs coolant out of the thermostat housing and through the throttle body which the concept is that um, in really cold temperatures it warms up the the charge a little bit so that there's not such cold air going into the engine but as you all know we want cold air going into the engine that's why we do cold air intakes and things to get the air filter away from the heat so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that coolant running through the throttle body just figure out how to cap the ends off and uh, yeah just keep going we're uh, we're getting closer getting a little more time to work on it so uh, hopefully we'll have it back up and ripping soon all right guys, just working on this front crank seal. I went ahead and pulled the uh, the bracket off that goes around to keep the belt from jumping. 
which also holds in the crank position sensor. And we can, then I was able to pull the uh, sprocket off with the tone wheel. So now we can see the seal there. I'm going to go ahead and try to pop it out of there, pop the new one in, and maybe clean it up just a little bit. So then we'll put the tone wheel back on and the sensor and belt guide. And we should be good on this bottom end. So then I'm going to put the water pump on and the timing belt and we'll be ready to put the front end back together. the new seal on the crank and uh, sprocket put on the sensor and the belt guide and everything clean it up just a little bit so now we're going to go ahead and put the water pump on um, I was also going to show you this the, uh, the idler pulley was right so I uh, lined them up and made sure everything was the same stuck it on the bracket and then this tensioner pulley is the same as well the timing belt tensioner I did want to show you the new one's really quiet and it just barely spins and stops. That's because the bearing's got grease packed in it, so that's what you want. When you find a bearing like this, which is also how this one works, it's time to replace them. Got the water pump off, got the new one out of the box, they look the same, so I'm going to go ahead and throw the new one back on. Um, this one feels really good. The bearings and everything feel really good in it. So probably just throw it in a box, throw it on the shelf. Looks like it is a Honda part, factory part. So. I got the water pump put on and the timing belt tensioner on the new one. So I'm getting ready to put the belt on now. The procedure that I found was to start at the crank and then go up around the tensioner and water pump, around the back cam, the intake cam, and then around the exhaust cam. Trying to keep the slack out of it the whole time. And then what I saw to do is then to turn the crank until the cams are off by three teeth and then tighten down the tensioner. I almost forgot to mention timing marks. So the, the line there on the sprocket lines up with the arrow on the oil pump and then on the cams you got these two marks here that face each other and then you want to make sure that it says up on both of the gears to make sure they're in the right position tensioner set and then we'll turn it over a couple revolutions and make sure the marks still line up So that's three teeth past the timing marks on the cams or just past it. Tension on the belt feels pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and lock down that bolt on the tensioner. Oops. Probably easier from the bottom actually. Ugh. 
Click. All right, so that should take care of it, I think. Let's uh, double check everything. So I'm just gonna rotate the engine over a couple of full revolutions. So this is the same way that the engine turns while it's running, which is looking at the front of the engine. The end of the crank is going counterclockwise. I can feel that it does have compression, so that's good. Oops, this went a little bit too far. Hard to hit it exact. So that's close. Close enough we should be able to tell down here. So it looks like it's lined up to me. Get this mark on the sprocket lined up with the arrow on the oil pump. And then we got our two cam marks lined up with one another so that's it that's good so I'm gonna go ahead and end this one off here I really appreciate everybody watching I appreciate everybody that's subscribed if you're not subscribed please do it's completely free helps me out a lot it's a uh, it's super easy I'll put it on the end of the video here when you see my Patman performance logo pop up you can just click on it to subscribe I would really really appreciate it so uh, next steps on this thing, we'll get the uh, timing cover and everything back on the front. I'm going to fabricate some solid mounts to replace these torque mounts in the front. Flywheel clutch transmission. And we're getting really close to being able to try to start it up. So thanks for watching. See you on the next one.